All right. Hello. My name is Mikko Häkken. I'm from Elisa. Uh, first question is that how many of you have heard word design system? Whoa, this is cool. I can actually tell you basics. Um, who think they know what design systems are? Okay. What do you think? Okay. The thing is, there is no one definition for the design systems. Uh, the reason for that is that every company builds their own design system for their own needs. So there is no one way to do it, or handle it, or build it. That's the fact. Uh, and why I'm saying this? Because I've been building an Alice design system two years now, and uh, I've also talked with other companies how they do it, and my experience is that there is no one way to do it. End of story. Uh, of course, it can be done or it could be tried, but I'm still very strongly disagree. All right. So my name is Mikko Hacken. I'm a design system lead at Elisa. I've been there in two years now. Uh, before that, I've been working with the different companies, building UIs as a service designer, roughly 15 years. So yeah, I'm almost 40. <laughs> Damn it. Um, but yeah. That's a short story about me. Uh, I'm also a very visual person, so I'm not a coder at all. So I don't know or understand your world that well. But it shouldn't be a problem here, because we have also Unite here, who can actually tell you then the code based on code side of this, this area better than I can do that. Uh, I have also created and organized design system conference last year for the 450 people. It was actually in the Helsinki University Great Hall, as you can see. Uh, so, yeah, through that I also know something about design systems. And I'm also second person who is running Helsinki design system meetups here in Helsinki area. So you can find us from the Twitter, hashtag hell slash, well, whatever, DSM. And then, of course, we have also a page for that, helldsm.com, if you are interested. And why this number? Uh, roughly 15% of re LSR revenue comes something else than telecom business. I'm not sure if you knew that. It's the one highest in the world. And that's all the reason why we need to own design system. So we have a lot of own products for consumer and business side, and we actually have to handle and build them efficient way. So this number is actually one of those reasons why we have a design system. All right, uh, why we are talking about design systems right now? Why now it's the time to talk about it? Why companies are so interested of them right now? Let's get to that. Uh, here are a few reasons. Number of services that companies have to deliver to customers is increasing. As we all know, all kind of, you know, services are needed self-services, everything is now on, nowadays somewhere else than in the office or in the, you know, the stones or wherever. Uh, number of integrations has increased a lot because of these reasons. And because of that, companies need a bigger team and more people to build these services. And this means that you need to somehow align organization to do this right. Of course, as I said, there will be challenges. This is probably the biggest reason. Uh, if you have a lot of individual teams who are building software or services, it means that they are not so aware of each other. It means that they actually do a lot of repeating work. There's a lot of things that they could actually share, and that way can avoid doing these repeatable tasks or components or whatever you want to call them. We need a design system. Uh, this is Elisa's world a few years back. Uh, there's a lot of different kind of components in these pages. Selectors, for example, you can find probably seven, eight different kind of selector here. Every each of them represent time that coders, 
from the developers have used to actually deliver them. Based of time and money, if you ask from me. It's no point that they everybody create their own components. It makes no sense. Another reason is also that actually the user experience differentiates from different services, so it's also hard to understand what this component is doing. You have to figure it out every time. So it's also bad user experience and bad usability and waste of time. And also there's a communication side. Every line means that with how many different kind of ways certain amount of people can communicate to each other and it just goes quite interesting. And this means that basically more people you have, more complicated communication will be. And if you have not a line how people understand certain things, terms, whatever, it gets more complicated. So if every of these dots also represent a little different idea, what direction, for example, pattern means, what colors we use, well, you get the picture. It's a mess. If you have, for example, seven teams, there's nine people in each team, which is quite a small amount, well, you, you, you get the idea. Also, when you get new people on the teams and they are developing the product, it means that it will affect the velocity a lot. New people have to learn the team's way of working, how you do implementation, how the brand look, stuff like that. Everything will consume time. And it means that it will slow down the velocity of building the product or service. Fact. And every time when you get a new idea, new pattern, new style, whatever, it does the same thing. And you can think about this if you have, for example, 14 teams, there comes new people now and then, they have their own components, we have this idea, we need this and that. Well, that is exactly what's going to happen. You lose time, which means you lose money, and actually the product is not going to be there on time, or at least it's not that fast. So, growing inconsistencies, because people don't e talk to each other that much, and they are not aware of what other teams are doing. It also affects user, user experience, which also sometimes it's not equal, but it still affects also usability. And all this is going to affect the underlying what the company is going to earn through the products and services that they have. It's also a waste of time and money in a teams, because people are doing this repeatable work. So it makes no sense. So, surprisingly, solution is a design system. Uh, it means that we need to align the organization, which means people and teams, around creating awesome experiences. And why I'm talking about experiences is because it's a key differentiator in the market. No one wants to compete with, the, for example, prices. That's the fact. Or you can, but it's actually just going to kill your company in the end. So if your experience of your services or product is superb, it's better than others, people are going to use it even though it's the same price or even a little higher. So, what is the design system? As I said, there is no one way to kind of say what it is, but this one try. So, interconnected patterns and shared practices. Patterns are those components that you share between teams, or it's a one single point of truth where people are actually taking the components to their own products. It's also shared practices, because when you do things in the same way, you don't need to think about it. Okay, how we do, for example, try to figure it out the next let's say, functionality for our product. So what is the process? So the teams don't need to think about that too. So it's also the design process could be there. Coding flow could be there. Whatever. Whatever helps teams to concentrate the actual delivery. So it takes time away from this repeatable nonsense stuff. And what is very important to understand that design system is not the project that start and ends. The reason is that if you create a component library and it's a project, 
it means that no one is going to actually maintain it. What happens to code that is not maintained? No. <laughs> exactly. So that's why it's a product that serves other products. So it's literally always created better and it's always there. Someone takes care of it, somebody cares about it and makes sure it actually works and it's up to date. So the other teams can actually use it and trust it. Because if you can trust the code that you are using from the library, you are probably not going to use it. Very simple. Okay. I've talked about the value already a little bit, but I will sum up this. At least I try. Um, you can deliver, deliver better experience faster. So when you can use the same, or you can use Ray components, you don't, you know, do the repeatable work. So you can actually concentrate instead building the, those same components again and again and again. You can actually concentrate, for example, try to solve next customer problem. So you can actually concentrate the real things, that something that customers actually care or bring value to them and the company. And as I said, you are using components that are already in production. So are they well tested and it's lower the cost of the long-term maintenance? Simple as that. And when you get a new hire, as I said, you get standardized onboarding with the design system. Because part of the design system is that you actually written down how things go. It's documented. So it's much faster for the new hires to get on board and how things go. Otherwise, if they go to the team and, and the, how they work is not documented, it's very hard to actually follow how things go. So, decreased development and design time, faster onboarding, more time for solving customer problems because you don't need to do that repeatable work, faster time to market, it's always better to be faster in the market than the competitors. Very simple. Better product quality means code and through this happier customer growing sales. It's actually quite simple stuff if you think about it. <laughs> it's not rocket science. You just have to do it. Uh, there are two ways, probably more, but I simplify this. There's an evolution versus revolution way to do the design system. And what I mean by this is that the fact is that change takes time. Because when you build a design system, you actually build it for the people. So you are actually the person who are going to use it. And as you know, if somebody tells you that, hey, have you changed your way of doing something, it takes time. You don't do it overnight usually. If somebody tells you that you have to change your habit, how easily that can be done. Some can do it faster, some a little slower. But the thing is that you can change people mindset overnight. So you need some time to do it. And revolution in context of design system means that you need a strong vision, which means understanding from the top management. You need a strong investment and strategy which support the change. So it's not only about the design system, then, then you're actually changing the whole company and how it thinks. It's not just about the design system. Because if then you change the whole way of working, how people should you know, think about building a product or services. So the change is actually very big. You need some money for it. You need, well, investment. Other way around is evolution, which means that you start from the bottom. Usually one developer or two or two teams have a challenge that, hey, we lose a lot of time by doing, you know, these same components over and over again. Or we have, let's say this, as I see in our example in Elisa, uh, we have a lot of, or we had a lot of same components. And you can realize that if you just make a little audit at how your different services look, you can very easily see that you have a lot of components that can be shared. It's not actually that big thing to do. So two teams can realize this. They can start from the bottom, so they decided, hey, let's build 
components together. It could be just two teams. You kind of ramp up the design system that way. It's one way to start it. You don't need a big investment. You need a two persons time both themes and they build a little. For example, they start to share buttons. Very simple. But those buttons alone can save a lot of time. Tens or hour, tens or hundreds of hours of time in the end. Because the repeatable stuff. And then it actually starts growing in the company organically. People go, hey, you get that somewhere, that ready component. Yeah, yeah, we did. And actually then the new team comes along and suddenly you have a lot of teams that are using the library because they see value from it. And the thing is that if you can't bring the value to the teams through the design system, it's not needed. Very simple. So if you can bring the value to teams who are using the design system patterns, then you're actually in the right track. This is an example. Uh, IBM, we all know IBM probably. So they used 100 million US dollars for the kind of change. They built, you know, 26 design studios, hired more than 1,000 designers, and these are just the numbers from the 2012-2016. It's already higher. The dev design iteration went to 1 to 80 to 1 to 20. And they had shorter development cycles from 20, 22 to 8 months, which is a lot. But yeah, they spent a lot of money to make this happen. So it's a big change in a company, how it thinks, how it works. What happens to Elisa? We have 50 plus designers at the moment. We have 14 products that are using design system at the moment. We have more than 100 shared patterns, and this is only for the web development, by the way. So it's just the CSS and HTML and React components. And it's mentioned in the code more than 3,000 times. Oh, 3,000 times, yeah. And we have saved more than 10,000 man hours work through this during four years. And that's the fact. We have calculated that. And at the same time, we had investment of 15,000 man hours during this time to this present day. At the moment, we have three persons team to building the design system. And that's enough for now. And work so that we have distributed team structure. It means that our product teams are actually building the new components and they are actually contributing them to our shared library. And our team is just helping them to do that. So we are not building the, the design system team itself. It's not building the components. We just help to do that. That's why we can keep the team time small. So we are supporting other teams. Any questions at this point? Yeah, I have finished out, it's true. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Yeah. It means that. Yeah, yeah. We we started with the half person, 2015. Um, and after that, we had a two person full time, and now we have three person full time. So we have just to calculate how many hours that have actually we have used during that time, through the persons. And then we have taken away that from the total savings and we have came to the number of 10,000 man hours that we have saved after that. Yeah, 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 but we have consumed 15,000 from it. So, so the actual saving is 10,000. But yeah, that's the math. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. You are in a mere minus. But no, that's not the case. Happily, I can say it here now. Yeah. Well, 
we roughly now now know how many of teams are using which components. So we are of course contact them if we do any changes. That's how it goes. And we actually plan to do that automatically in the future, so we actually know which component is used in which team and which version is in use. And but it's much of communication. <laughs> and then we are we are Spock at the moment, so single point of contact. So we know quite well what is happening in different teams. So at the moment it's more about that we make sure that the communication goes right. Hopefully we can automate that a little further in the future, but you not can tell more about that after my speech. Yep. All right, I think I'll let you do not come to the board. Hi guys, uh, I'm Junaid Rishid, and uh, I'm an uh, employee of Nord NordCloud, but uh, uh, I'm a part of uh, Elisa Design System team, uh, and I'm also a graduate of University of Helsinki from 2009 to 11. So uh, today I'm going to talk uh, about the design system in practice. That uh, what kind of problem organizations faces and uh, how design system can help those. So let's start with the definition. As Mikko told that there is no one definition. So this is one of the def definitions of design system. And it's uh, from Envision. Uh, and it talks about uh, reusable components and, uh, and uh, kind of uh, rules and uh, guidelines on, on, uh, on, them, on them. And then those uh, reusable components uh, create uh, the number of applications. So it's about like, uh, like uh, uh, it's about consistency and uh, then scale and uh, efficiency. Hello. Oh yeah. So what kind of problem? So as Miko already mentioned that there are like uh, in an organization, especially bigger, there are. There are uh, like uh, different teams who are independent and working uh, independently. And uh, they have their own uh, designers and developers, so they don't need to actually uh, uh, communicate uh, with the others. Basically, they need to, but they don't do because they are like, uh, they are very busy and uh, like their deadlines, they need to meet deadlines. So what what they are doing? They are doing like repetitive works, and in in kind of result, they, you you will see the inconsistency, the the UI components they are creating. So uh, and uh, then if there is inconsistency in uh, in like UI, then uh, definitely the user experience is inconsistent. And uh, the wastage of, because the work is repetitive, so wastage of resources, time, and money. So uh, how design system help here? It makes sure that the teams are like working in collaboration, and uh, uh, they are like using uh, common language, visual language, and uh, they are identi identifying the patterns and uh, patterns and uh, then uh, teams are like contributing to libraries and uh, then libraries becomes a single sor source of truth teams are not repeating work in result the consistent ui and and then uh, the saving of cost and money so it's like never ending story once uh, you develop a design system then uh, it will uh, it will get improved over time, but uh, it will like keep going. Thing. So here, uh, the practices we use in in uh, the the tools and the practices we use in uh, Alisa design system. So it starts with the UI kit, which is like visuals, and uh, then those uh, visuals we like develop them in a pattern library. Pattern library is a like a static file. It's a kind of HTML CSS. It unifies the semantically uh, components uh, so that the different teams, when they are using it, they have kind of same uh, styles and uh, uh, markups. 
And then we can control the accessibility of the components. And uh, these, uh, these library can be shared with, uh, with the CDN content delivery network or NPM package. And uh, uh, our, this is uh, the public website, stylebook.elitsafi. And it is public because the third parties are using uh, also, because they create a content for, for Elisa, so they take benefit out of it. And uh, uh, these are like static, and then uh, we have these React patterns. React patterns basically are the logical components. And uh, React, React, patterns, uh, React patterns are based on pattern library. So this is like design and development workflow uh, in Elisa. We, we design or teams design or uh, like develop a component and we release the pattern library or other library and that can be used in product development. So uh, here we will talk about more uh, React pattern that how we d develop the component. So we use a basically storybook. So we'll talk about the, the storybook. How many of you have worked with Storybook? Many. Basically, what is this? Uh, what is Storybook? It's a it's a uh, development environment for building UI components, and uh, and uh, it's a kind of playground for the UI components. It provides isolated development environment, uh, so uh, one don't need to worry about uh, about the business uh, logic or or dependencies or or kind of requirements. So uh, when developing components in isolation, it also extends the like reusability and testability and efficiency. Like you can indirectly build the component and test those. Storybook also uh, provides a way of document the components and uh, uh, allow to like browse the components, view different states of components, and uh, it's a good uh, like great experience for developers. Space for for Storybook we use in Alisa, but let's. I'll, I'll go uh, and demo the Elisa uh, pattern library we are using. Okay, so this is like storybook for Elisa patterns, and the, these are the list of the components we are using. And uh, let's start with the basic button component. And this uses this is the component view. And if we kind of click that, so this is the action logger where you can see that component have implemented some kind of actions. So you can uh, add uh, add-ons to the fun uh, like uh, you can add add-ons to extend the uh, functionality of the story uh, storybook. So, for example, here we have added this uh, usage info uh, plugin or add-on, and where you can like document those and see how the component can be used. Another component can be for example combo box. You can easily create your own like app uh, supporting uh, like storybook. It's pretty 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 much easy easy now with these commands. 
I will share this presentation with you guys. Okay. Then uh, when you develop like a library of components and uh, different teams and products are using those. Uh, uh, so the things are like working now uh, and uh, if you update some uh, something on library then it will um, directly go to the different uh, products. Uh, but it comes with the responsibility. For example, if you kind of uh, do some mess up with the library, then it will like break the things. Uh, for example, this is the example I, I just recently we had this issue. So this is the component after update. You can see that this this plan uh, the user cannot like user is unable to select this. So even if you have tested the component functionality, if there is some uh, problem with the visuals and still you can like the, the, the functionality can be like broken. So with the React Storybook uh, provides, uh, like this, uh, this is kind of a plugin, uh, Loki, which uh, which can be used for for the visual regression test. Uh, how does it work? It initially it takes uh, the screenshot of uh, the components and uh, store it in one directory, and uh, whenever next time you test those. Whenever you test those, it will always take a new screenshot and compare it with the uh, reference one, and then uh, it will show the difference. So this this is the result. If you see uh, before update, it's uh, like a, a reference image, and uh, after update, uh, the text went to the second line, and then you can see the difference there. Yeah, I guess that's it. So. It's a huge topic, it, which cannot be covered in like some time. But I tried my best. But if so, if you guys still have any question or want to know more about this, please, this is my email address. And if you guys have any question, please ask. So how about this uh, visual regression testing? Are you also assembling these kind of smaller uh, components to a bigger ones and testing those also? Or how, like, like the one you saw the problem, it was kind of that even if you individually test all these things, they are kind of fine, but then if, when you assemble those to a bigger kind of whole it breaks then so how can you ensure this with this kind of testing visual well, testing tools yeah this this is only a component testing like it's not product uh, and testing uh, if the components are being used in products then mm, they might need to think about it that how even they they can use this uh, like tool to uh, to test uh, like visually but some of the some of the com components are a collection of smaller components. And if you have implemented those in, in uh, Storybook, uh, this Loki uh, use Storybook to, to take the screenshot. So you can actually test those. So how about this React implementation? Is it open source or was it internal? Uh, do you mean the Storybook? Uh, no, this Elisa, like you had this style oh, okay. design system as open, but what about the React components? Uh, well, I think we don't have permission on this, so it's it's not external, it's internal, so components. So yeah, maybe uh, Miko can tell about this. Yeah. Uh, the style book, the HTML. Actually, you better use this. Uh, yeah, so the CSS and HTML libraries public uh, and the React patterns are not. The reason for this is that the React patterns are actually including, let's say, knowledge, how they function. So there could be something related to business, for example. So because of that, we are not so eager to put them you know, available for everyone. That's the reason, because there could be some logic that is related to business, for example. 
or then there could be some challenges or, or things that could be also related to just security. So we can't share everything. So it's safer, just keep it internal. But HTML CSS has its public website anyway, you know, and everything is on, for example, Azure.fi is public anyway. So it makes no sense to hide it. So that's why it's public to the HTML CSS version. Yeah. And uh, back to your question, uh, like about how this, uh, like how to conceive the pattern. Uh, well, uh, it's a, like we have a communication uh, channels for, for the teams, they communicate there and we have a process where you go through uh, each step of the process and then uh, you know that it's a, pro, uh, uh, it's a pattern or uh, when uh, there is a need for a component, then uh, a team will shout that in, in our like uh, communication channel uh, that if someone else has built it, then uh, uh, then they can actually use it, or they can uh, because it's a now pattern, so that can be imported to pattern library, and then uh, from there, like other team can benefit, get benefit of it, out of it. And as I said, because we are building this for the people, so a lot of our work actually goes to communication. So we have to go and meet the teams and explain them how we work, what is the process, how they should approach when they think about is this a pattern or not. We have created actually internal page design.elisa.fi. It's not you know external, so don't go there. It doesn't help you at all. Uh, but it's for the internal use. So we actually have documented all the workflows, how you find the patterns, who you should contact, how the whole thing work if you need a pattern or create or you need to create one or actually start thinking is this a pattern or not. So we have actually documented that flow and it can be found from that address. Uh, we have also documented how we use Jira. We use Jira for to, you know, keep track what we are doing and also because whole is using it widely. So we are also that way make our way of work and workflow kind of uh, transparent to everyone. So everybody knows what we are doing and when we are doing and what we are doing. So transparency is actually a key point for the design system team because every team has to know what we are doing and why. And then half of our time goes basically running to teams and just make sure that they know how they should approach this. They should know how we work, what we are expecting from them and what they can expect from us. So it's a lot of communication. Tools alone do not solve any problems. That's what I've learned. <laughs> so it's it's if you know how to use them, if you know what is thinking behind them, then it starts actually work. That's something that's very is actually very very important to keep in mind. So communication is the key in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much.